what's going on guys so tonight we're gonna do a little after hours project so to say i've been wanting to build a metal lathe little one for quite a while now and greg the guy that helps us out here at the shop he's been trying to get me to build one so i finally bought all the parts all the rails and everything and the pulleys and the motor and so on and so forth anyway i went to start on this project today and had a customer show up um, we went ahead and knocked out his stuff so here i am after hours project we're gonna start on it thought i'd bring you guys along with us and try to get as much film as i could so let's get started go ahead right here whenever I put this pillow block in I was gonna space it I was gonna put it back here so that it was a more of an area that the bearings actually covered on that shaft but I got longer I got to thinking about it when that motor and the pulleys are mounted I want it to be as close and as flush to this housing or or the base of this wherever you want to call it as I can so I went ahead and put it on the inside I mean really we only lost maybe two inches of spacing there but for i mean it's an inch and a half shaft for a eight by 24 lathe so it's not going to be super overkill or super um, critical i should say but anyway here's the the slide for the the tool and then here's the overall slide like i said i went ahead and ordered all the bolts um today my objective here is to go ahead and get all my plates drilled and countersunk uh, this plate and this plate. I've got all my holes drilled already in my I-beam. Um, and then, so this little, I tried to make a cool little pal fab deal last night and it was too small. The artwork was too small for the size of plate that I used. So instead of cutting out another piece of quarter, I'll come back in and I will make a little safety badge, so to say, um, just to cover that up and you'll never be able to know it. But anyway, pretty stoked with it so far got to get all of our adjustments right as far as up and down on our shaft make sure it's run parallel with the with the i-beam itself or with the base and i had some belts that i had bought um, thought they were going to be long enough but i wasn't taking into consideration the actual spacing from the bottom up so anyway we got another belt ordered we got some nuts and bolts ordered and we'll just get as far as we can today and and go from there. see that but went ahead and got uh, got all of our holes marked out on both plates we'll go ahead and step on over to the drill press and get them all drilled the second plate here I know a lot of guys drive or complain about using a sharpie or whatever as doing your lines and I do agree it's not near as precise as 
as if you're gonna scribe it or something like that. But on something like this, I'm gonna drill the holes a little bit bigger so that whenever I put my two plates on there that I can actually get it perfectly square with my bolts, if that makes any sense. The, you could probably get it just fine, but I wanna get it as precise as I can. Um, the point was brought up, Greg said it yesterday, the two rails need to be almost perfect because if you're doing a long piece, the if you're doing a 24 inch piece, it could be 50 to 60 thousandths off from one side to the other. No, that's not a bunch in the welding world, but if you're trying to build something that's precise, you wanna make it as precise as you possibly can. But anyway, we'll hop on over to the drill press and get, I don't know how many holes there is here, but get all these punched and we'll go from there. All right, well, we got all of our holes drilled and countersunk. Uh, again, this is what I was meaning the other night. The bolts are just a touch too long, so I got some new ones coming um, here in a couple days. But I did make sure that all this is gonna work. And uh, I got a little binding issue here that I gotta figure out, but I don't think it'll be too major. Um, I did go ahead and cut the shaft down because um, it was stuck out, you know, a long ways. And I went ahead, measured my chuck, and I cut me out a plate out of some half inch steel. I'm gonna go ahead and weld it to the shaft so that I can get it all decently level and decently trued up. Um, obviously once we get the lathe actually built, we'll come back through and, and square this plate up, put the little divot in it that I need and, and all that. But anyway, I got those cut. I also got the little blocks cut for our tool rest. So tonight's objective is uh, I'd like to get these uh, holes drilled and tapped for where the tool actually goes get this on and back in so that I can kind of tell where I'm at a little better and then I should be able to start on my tool rest um, decently soon but that's all going to kind of determine too um, as far as getting it done would be the bolts and stuff but anyway Another couple of days and those will be in. So anyway, let's get this thing welded up over here so we can move on. even worth buttoning up my shirt. Waiting on the guy to get back with me on the tools, or the tooling, I should say. I'm gonna go ahead and drill and tap the top of the tool rest, um, the piece that actually pinches the, the carbide bit in, or the carbon, whatever you're, you're cutting with. But uh, anyway, it's just this little three by three block. I think I'm gonna put, uh, do one, two, and three. Um, hopefully that doesn't mess up if I was to put tooling on this side. And then I think one side I'm gonna leave open just in case for whatever reason down the road, I needed it for something else. Really three sides of a tooling block is more than enough for something like this. I'm never gonna have three tools chucked up at the same time. So we will roll with that. You know what makes a great scribe tool when you don't have one? An old junk razor blade.
we're reinventing the wheel here. Obviously on something like this, it's pretty small, so you can tell where your, you know, where your actual holes are. But old man taught me on the pipeline one time that if you'll take and put a little sharpie mark where all of your little dimple dies are, or if like on old rusty pipe or something, take a white pin and put it where the holes are, it's a lot easier to find. You'll thank me later, I promise. Anyway, let's go on over to the drill press. Try and get these things drilled out. How about you? Alright, got seven holes to drill. I'm gonna go over here to the to the vise and see if I can get a couple taps tonight before I tap out for the night. Haha, <laughs> get it? Anyway, you guys will just have to bear with me. The lighting sucks over here. I don't know if you can see any better or not. So we're back uh, a couple days later here. I forgot to video the other day the finish of the tool rest. Uh, whenever I was tapping those holes, the camera ended up getting hot and I didn't ever turn it back on. I ended up having a tap break in one of the holes, so I had to fish it out. But anyway, it's Monday today and everyone's favorite person when they have a project going on is the mailman. So we've got, uh, We've got a bunch of nuts and bolts here to start. Uh, I went ahead and disassembled everything, but I'm gonna reassemble everything now. I'm gonna go ahead and get all of our rails bolted down and anchored down, and then we'll get all the plates done, and then we'll kind of go from there. I need to figure out how I'm gonna mount the ball screw, and I mean, really, we're not that far away from being able to turn this plate down and kind of seeing where we've got for speeds and all that so let's get to it <laughs>
We're back today to start painting the lathe. That's all I gotta say about that. Alright guys, if you made it this far in the video, we thank you. Uh, since you put this much effort into this video so far, um, press the like button, leave us a comment on what you thought of the build, what we could have done better, what you liked, so on and so forth. Um, it's a month and a half later probably, maybe even two months, it's been a while, but we've got it all painted, we've been using it, figuring out all of our bits, how not to break carbides, how to break carbides. Um, just really just playing around making a few little tinkering things here in the shop but i was gonna go more into depth here in the end so that uh, you could see it we made some little um handles put on i gotta put smaller bolts in it that's just what i had here in the shop and i didn't end up putting like a warning label i just used that as another um, advertisement point we put this little tray up here so that we can still bring it up and get inside if we ever need to change anything um ended up changing the jaws back to the inside jaws those work pretty good um we got it wired the switch down here we just swiveled the plate off of a, a little half inch bolt just enough the motor tension really does pretty dang good honestly and it's quick and easy to change gears when we need to um and we didn't end up staying with the old tool rest um a guy neighbor guy up here is a machinist and he found one of these laying around at work and asked me if i could use it and i said yeah so we uh we put it to use works out awesome when you're trying to change from bit to bit but we're no machinist we're just having fun with it making little oddball stuff here in the shop some hinges and fixture table tools yeah fixture table tools or we've tinkered with that we're not all the way there yet but anyway we hope you guys like this video um we got some more tooling videos in the pipeline um for the future old greg here he's leaving us for a little while he's got a real job and uh we're gonna try to do the youtube stuff on the side still so if we don't have videos out every week you'll know why and uh <laughs> my fault as usual yeah his fault always his fault i don't care what it is it's always his fault even if he's at his other job, the stuff from now on is still going to be Greg's fault because he's not here. But anyway, thanks for watching the video, guys. Um, thanks for all the support so far, and we'll see you on the next one.